Benjamin West and his cat Grimalkin by Marguerite Henry. Chapter 21, The Unknown Journeyman. Two mornings later, Benjamin stood in the center of the kitchen, wondering what to do with himself. It seemed strange to be wearing his first day suit on third day. He had never noticed it before, but his arms were too long for the sleeves. He felt as gangly as a newborn colt. His eyes glanced about the kitchen and fell upon his knapsack. For two days now it had leaned against the wall like a tired person. Grimalkin slept on it by the hour. It was as if he knew it held all of Benjamin's belongings as well as his own things, the collar and lead that Benjamin had made for him in Philadelphia, a packet of dried cat mint, the bell he always wore around his neck during the bird nesting season, his wooden dinner basin. Is thee below, Benjamin, called Mama from the head of the stairway. The girls are tidying thy room, she said with a catch in her voice. They found this poplar board uh, behind thy bed. Slowly, she made her way down the stairway, treasuring the poplar board as if it had been a lock of hair. Methinks some journeyman bound for Philadelphia will surely come today, she said. The snow is stopped. The hollows in the road are well packed for travel. The streams are frozen and passable. Slaying will be exceedingly pleasant. Benjamin was a long time answering. He knew he should be happy, but somehow the kitchen was warm and cozy, and Philadelphia seemed big and far away. And the very thought of traveling with an unknown journeyman made him break out in prickles of goose flesh. Suppose the man was not over fond of cats. Suppose... <clears throat> Mama seemed to read Benjamin's mind. A mannerly cat is welcome even on a journey, she replied with firm assurance. And when the stranger sees the good bean porridge all frozen in a solid chunk and ready to be tied onto his sleigh, he will be glad of a boy and a cat for company. They had best take a hatchet along to chop the porridge. Now then, Mama went on with a little smile, it has been in my mind a pretty while that we have no image of Grimalkin except the one in our hearts. I desire a good likeness to set upon the mantle. Begin it now, lad, whilst I draw my bread from the oven. Benjamin tried to speak, but a choking filled his throat. How nice it was that he and Mama did not need words. He lifted the knapsack with Grimalkin still dozing on it and moved it to a little patch of sunlight. The cat stretched, opened a sleepy eye and watched with grave interest. Then he yawned a long pink yawn and gazed up with an air of approval that said quite plainly, this now, this is like olden times. Benjamin's paint box was packed away in the knapsack, so he began rummaging in the little cubby hole beside the hearth. He found a small, hard lump of yellow clay, softened it with skimmed milk, and added some indigo from the dye pot. This be as green as thy eyes, he said to Grimalkin as he stirred the mixture. Then he picked up a piece of charcoal and set to work. Oh, the joy of having something to do. If I don't watch myself, I might purr like Grimalkin, he laughed. His hands moved swiftly and surely, and little by little, the whiskery face of a cat began to look out from the poplar board. It was an impish face, ears pricked forward, mouth open in a mischievous smile, eyes green and shining. Benjamin was lost in a world of his own. He did not hear the clicking of the latch. He did not hear the door creak open and then shut again. He did not feel the cold gust of wind that swirled into the room. Suddenly, a hand gripped his shoulder and a voice whispered in awe. Is Grimalkin you paint? Benjamin almost fell off his stool. 
he whirled around and stood facing a tall blonde boy, a boy whose sleeves were too short for his jacket. Jacob, Jacob Ditzler, it is thee. And then his tongue went silent. Jacob's eyes were fastened on Grimalkin. Moving slowly now so as not to frighten the cat, he walked around Benjamin and stopped before the knapsack. Grimalkin leaped lightly to the floor and began sniffing Jacob's boots. Then he rubbed himself against Jacob's legs. In an instant, Jacob was on his knees, his arms around Grimalkin. Ah, yeah, yeah, he breathed. You don't forget, Jacob. It wonders me how you remember. At last, he turned to Benjamin, his eyes filled with happiness. Just like you said, a house catch you make of him. You here right along, ain't? No, Jacob. I'm going to Philadelphia to paint. Think on it. To paint. No, exclaimed Jacob. Ach, no. Benjamin nodded. Why, I go too, Benjamin. My pa is out in the wagon shed mit your pa. A new sleigh we got and two oxen already. We go by Philadelphia too. Soon a shipbuilder I am. Soon I make ropes and sails. Ach, Benjamin, you can ride to Philadelphia along, ain't? Suddenly, door latch in rang with noise and laughter. The girls flew downstairs from their cleaning. Papa and the boys and Mr. Ditzler came in, stamping the snow from their feet. The kettle was singing over the fire. The table board was heaped with hot cornbread and deer meat and cheese and eggs and blueberry tarts. But Benjamin and Jacob were so full of plans, they had little room for food. Besides, they were looking forward to building a fire in Penn's forest together and chopping off a great hunk of frozen bean porridge and heating it over their own fire. Mr. Ditzler, however, had a robust appetite. He cleaned his plate three times. Then he looked out at the sky. Just midday, he announced as he wiped his mouth on his sleeve. If we go now, we get maybe 10, 12 miles behind us already before dark night comes. In a moment, the entire family was standing before a bright red sleigh in the winter sunshine of the courtyard. Everything was in readiness. Benjamin's knapsack wedged in between a little cowhide trunk of Jacob's and a bag of feed for the oxen. The bean porridge tied on to the back of the sleigh. Now Mr. Ditzler and Jacob and Benjamin climbed into the sleigh and let Mama and Papa tuck them in snugly with a bearskin. My little wren, whispered Mama, while Papa scowled and grunted to hide his real feelings. Grimalkin leaped onto Benjamin's shoulder and placed one paw on Jacob's back. He sniffed Jacob in a warm, friendly way, playfully cuffing the tail of his foxskin cap. Gyop, cried Mr. Ditzler. Slowly, the oxen shuffled off, their sleigh bells playing a kind of haunting tune. When Dorlatch Inn was out of sight, Jacob turned to Benjamin with a deep sigh. Everything gets all right, ya? Yeah? Aye, everything, chuckled Benjamin. And Grimalkin let out a happy purr into the frosty air.